Our subject for this evening, how to have peace of mind. What did I say? How to have, there isn't a soul on the face of the earth who does not want peace of mind. Peace of mind has medicinal benefits. Peace of mind. And there is a way to enjoy peace of mind, regardless of the storms swirling around you. There is a way, like Jesus Christ, to sleep in a boat while the storm is raging all around and everyone else is in a panic. How to have peace of mind. Before I get into the message, the pastor said, mute your phones. If you don't need them, turn them off completely until they are dead like Lazarus, please. Turn your phones off. If you need them, then of course, you don't need the sound to read the word. I like to tell people, you know, times change and you cannot stop time from changing. But it seems to me that these things are going out of style and these are taking over. And I'm fighting a one-man battle to preserve these, especially in churches. So this is the Holy Bible. This is not the Holy iPhone. Can you say amen? All right. <laughs> okay. Favor number two, while I'm speaking, pray for me and say, Lord, put your words in that man's mouth. Let me tell you a secret about, thank you, thank you. Let me tell you a secret about me. Don't tell anyone. My words cannot save you. They can hurt you. They cannot save you. However eloquently I speak them, my words cannot save you. My words cannot bring back a rebellious child who ran away from home. The words of God can. And so you pray and say, God, put your words where? In that man's mouth. This request is based on Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 9. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. If you pray that prayer from time to time, God will answer you. And the words that you hear will be the words of God, not the words of Randy Skeet. Favor number three, as you listen, think. Say amen for think. <laughs> Thinking is not very popular. It's hard work. But we were made by God to think. Isaiah 1 18, come now, let us do what? Reason together. I say it again, thinking takes effort. You need an active mind to think. And so think. As you think, the Spirit of God will bless that mental activity and will reveal truth to the active mind. An idle mind, finish it for me, is the devil's workshop. All right, let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for the gift of love and life. Thank you to God for this day you gave to us. You brought us close to the end. We've assembled in your house to worship you in spirit and in truth. If we have sinned against you, particularly me, forgive us, dear God. Cleanse me, Father, as I humble myself before you. My desire as I stand on this hallowed ground is to speak for you, to talk about you, and to glorify you. Help me to do that, Father. I ask you to suppress my carnal nature, that your glory alone becomes my mission. Bless everyone who's come. A double blessing on all our guests. Bless those listening online. And Father, a sweet blessing on all the children who are listening in person or online. And if anyone listening to me, dear God, has contracted the coronavirus, I ask in the name of Jesus to heal that person, Father. Jesus healed everyone who came to him. And he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so I call upon you, because you are also merciful, God, in the name of Jesus, the great physician. If anyone listening to me has contracted COVID-19, heal that person, dear God. I am not praying just for improvement. I am asking you, God, for total healing on that person. Now speak through me, I pray, please. In Jesus' name, let God's people say, amen and amen. How to have peace of mind.
All is well? Are you still here? So am I, so am I. What's our subject? Someone on this side. How to have peace of mind. This side, are they correct? Yes, they are. All right. Let's go with me to Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews 11. In the New Testament, most scholars believe Hebrews was written by the Apostle Paul. Hebrews 11, let's read verse 6. I'm reading from the King James Version of the Bible. You may have different versions. Hebrews 11, reading verse 6. Try to see that it's, uh, it looks like 20, what time does that say? Is it 20 after 7? I'll release you by 8 o'clock. Is that okay? Since you didn't answer, I'll release you by 9. Is that okay? <laughs> All right. I'll release you by 8 o'clock. Is that okay? All right. Okay. What book did I say? What chapter? What verse? But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh unto God must believe that he is. What does the word must suggest? It's non-negotiable. Listen to the words of God, not my words. He that cometh to God must believe that he is. First, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Don't change the order. We must believe that he is. He is what? That he's God. He is what? He is all-powerful. He is what? He is creator. He is what? He is savior. He is what? He is coming king. We must believe that he is. What is he? He is forgiving. What is he? He is long-suffering. What is he? He desires fellowship with you and me. He that cometh unto God must believe that he is. Now, belief is not a human product. It is a gift from God, and as we use it, it grows. Let me say it again. Belief or faith is a gift from God. Listen to Galatians. Well, you go to Galatians 5. Let's read 23, 22, and 23 of Galatians 5. Our subject, how to have peace of mind. Galatians 5, 22, and 23, we're commenting on this thing called belief or faith, and I said it is a gift of God, which we must use as we use it. It grows. No human person can produce faith of himself or herself, not the faith that saves Galatians 5, 22, but the fruit of the Spirit is, if you have the list, read with me, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. Those are the fruits of whom? The Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance are gifts or fruits of the Spirit the Spirit of the living God, they are of a heavenly origin. Now, having identified faith or belief as something originating with God, we go back to Hebrews 11, verse 6. And let's put two and two together and see what we get. Hebrews 11, verse 6, but without faith, it is impossible to please Him without this heavenly product. So it must come from God. It is impossible to please God. For he that cometh unto God must believe, faith believe, that he is. Now, what is it we are to believe that God is? Okay, I said he's creator, he's savior. Let's see how deep this faith is. Go to Genesis chapter 1. How to have peace of mind. Genesis 1, we read from verse 1. Genesis 1, verse 1. Can't take you that long to find Genesis 1, verse 1. First verse of the Bible. When you found it, say amen. amen. In the beginning, say it with me, God created the heaven and the earth. And in a very real sense, that's everywhere. Because when Jesus said, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth, he meant everywhere. In the beginning, God 
created the heaven and the earth. The question then becomes, how? How did he do that? I was in the gym in New York City. I was speaking for church two years ago. A friend and I went to the gym to exercise. And this guy was at a machine, and he got off the machine, took his bottle, took a drink. Then he flipped the bottle, and it landed on his base and didn't fall. And I said, do that again. <laughs> How did you do that? I was amazed. He just tossed it, flipped it. It landed on its base and didn't quiver. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. How did he do that? Go to verse 3 of Genesis 1. Read with me. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. Stop. How did God create the heavens? He spoke. How did he create the earth? He spoke. Now let me ask you this as we talk about belief and faith. How does that work? Which of you understands how that works? None of you and I don't. How can someone just speak and something appear? Go to Psalm 148. Let's see how deep this is. Psalm 148, we read verses 1, 2, and 5. Our subject, how to have peace of mind. Clock looks like, well, you tell me what it says. The light is in my eye. Do you have Psalm 148? What verses did I say? 1, 2, and 5. Very good. Before I read it, let me pray again. Father in heaven, as I continue, remind me I am here for your glory and to be a blessing to your people. Give me simple language from the throne. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise ye him, all his angels. Praise ye him, all his hosts. We have angels and hosts. Verse 5, let them praise the name of the Lord, for he did what? He commanded, finish the verse. Question for you, how were angels made? By the word. Now explain how that works. How do you create a living being out of nothing? What is necessary to come to God? Faith. There is no faith unless it is faith in thus saith the Lord. Now, we cannot explain how creation occurred. We know God spoke. That's it. That's as far as we go. The same thing applies to salvation. Go to John chapter 3, my second favorite book. What question should you ask me? Yes, <laughs> it's Genesis. All right. John chapter 3, let's read verse 8. Take some time and read the gospel of John. It is a superb book. You're reading a book written by a man who was closer to Christ than any of the other disciples. Close to Christ. Do you have John chapter 3, verse 8? The Bible says, The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh or whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Now we have creation and salvation in that verse. Uh, you're looking at me as if to say, explain. Let me explain. Listen to the Bible as it speaks. Listen microscopically. The wind bloweth where it listeth. The wind is part of creation. Genesis 1 verse 6, and God said, let there be a firmament. The wind is in the firmament. Genesis 5 20, and God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament. That's where the wind is. Jesus says, the wind bloweth where it listeth, wherever it wants. And thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell, you have no clue how the winds move around the earth. Then he said, so is everyone that is born of the Spirit. This is how salvation works. You cannot fully understand how a drunkard, a robber, a thief, a murderer becomes a preacher. But it happens. 
and you're called upon to believe it. Why did I say faith is such an intense thing? Faith requires us to believe what we cannot explain. But we believe it even though we cannot explain it because of who said it. In Luke chapter 5, when the disciples were fishing all night and caught precisely nothing, Jesus said to them, cast your nets the right side of the boat. Go cast your nets again. That happened to them twice at least. Peter said, Lord, we fished all night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. Now, we have two things. I said earlier, we believe the word because of who said it. Listen to Peter. Nevertheless, at thy, that's who, word. Because you said this, I believe. The last time I was here, I was on my way to the gym, and I didn't know where it was, the YMCA. I believe there's a YMCA in town. I saw a policeman. So I, I said, officer, can you tell me where the YMCA is? He said, go this way, that way, that way. I never questioned him. Why? He's a policeman. He patrols the town. He knows every nook and cranny. So when he said, go this way, I went this way, that way, that way, and I found it. I went because of who he was. He was a resident. He tours the town. He patrols. He knows. I believed him without question. I didn't say, are you sure? because of who he was. Sometimes when roads are being repaired, traffic is rerouted in strange ways, that if you followed under normal circumstances, you would be ticketed. Here's someone with a hard hat and a brightly colored coat, and the person says, go that way. And you go, why? Because the person represents the authority of the government or the town or the township repairing the road. You don't ask questions, you just go, even if you're going along a lane that normally comes this way. We are to believe what God says because He said it. Which means then our faith is in God so that the Word of God is the means by which we exercise faith in a person. Now, say for me the most popular verse in the Bible. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Whosoever believeth in him. Go to the book of Acts chapter 16. Let's read verse 31. Acts 16 verse 31. Paul and Silas have been imprisoned for preaching the gospel. Preaching truth is often dangerous. There's an earthquake. The jail is damaged. The prisoners escape. Paul and Silas remain in, it, in their cells. The jailer, so delighted that Paul and Barnabas, uh, Silas had not run, he fell down. He brought them out and fell down before them. Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They said in him, verse 31, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. Believe. Go to Acts chapter 8. We were in 16. Let's go to Acts chapter 8. Looks like 7.30. Acts chapter 8, written by Luke, who also wrote the Gospel of Luke. And the book of Acts is an account of the Holy Spirit leading the early church. Acts chapter 8, verse 36. Philip is sent by the Spirit of God and an angel to minister to an Ethiopian eunuch who is reading the Bible but does not understand what he's reading. Philip explains that what he was reading was about Jesus Christ. I believe he was reading Isaiah 53. In verse 36, the Bible says of Acts chapter 8, and as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water. And the eunuch said, see, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? What did Philip say? If thou believest how, Come on, say it loudly. If thou believest how, with all thine heart, come on, thou mayest. Now, Philip said, you've got to believe how, with all your heart. So we have believe, then we have how strong, with everything you have. Question for you. 
Will the sun rise tomorrow, yes or no? Yes. yes. Do you have any doubts? No. If the sun rise, if your life depended on the sun rising tomorrow, would you be worried? No, because you believe, you just know the sun will rise. Belief takes away uncertainty. Let me say that again. Belief, faith replaces uncertainty. They cannot coexist. Let me show that to you in the Word of God. Go to Matthew 14. Matthew 14, our subject is how to have peace of mind. We're looking at God's Word, what God, how He will have us respond to His Word. It is to believe it. We're looking at the intensity of belief with all your heart. Matthew 14, read from verse 25. Jesus was in the mountain praying. He sends the disciples on a boat to the other side of the lake. The Bible says, and in the fourth watch of the night, Matthew 14, verse 25, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit, and they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I. Be not afraid. Now, and Peter answered him and said what? Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. It was dark. They saw something. They thought it was a ghost. He said, come. Verse 29, and when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink. He cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, what? O thou of, come on, wherefore didst thou doubt? Why did you doubt? That's our problem. <laughs> we doubt. The Bible calls upon us to believe. We naturally doubt. And so Jesus said, why did you doubt? My word says to you, bring you all the tithe into the storehouse, that they may be meat in mine house, and prove me now herewith, save the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And God says to so many of us, why do you doubt? If we confess our sins, say it with me. He is faithful, come on, and just, come on, to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from most unrighteousness, all unrighteousness, mass murder, genocide, bank robbery, rape, you name it. If it's confessed, Jesus forgives, we doubt. And so a lot of people will not come to Jesus because they believe they're too bad. That's why he came. For bad people. To make them, come on, good. Go to Mark chapter 11. Second gospel, he was not one of the 12 disciples. Mark 11, we read 23. Read microscopically, read carefully. It's almost 20 to 8. When did I say I'll let you go? Did I really say that? Okay. I believe you. You look like honest people. What book did I say? Mark. What chapter? 11. What verse? 23. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea. Read with me now. And shall not doubt in his heart. No doubt. The kingdom of God does not work where doubt exists. Not even the power of God works to great effect where there is doubt. When Jesus went to Nazareth, the Bible says he could do no mighty work there because of their unbelief. 
God calls upon you and me to believe in him to such a degree that there is no room for doubt. I would have peace of mind. Take God, finish my words, at his word, at his word. Go to Psalm 106. Psalm 118, sorry. Psalm 118. I want you to read that verse with me if you have my version. Psalm 118, verse 6. I want you to tell me if you believe that verse. Do you have Psalm 118? Verse 6. Do you have that? I want this side to read for me. Are you ready? Tell me what it says. The Lord is on my side. Come on. Stop. I will not what? Give me another word based on our message tonight. I will not doubt. I will not doubt. I travel a lot. And I thank God for that glorious privilege. There's no better education than traveling. And I'm always going through security machines and hands up and all sorts of things. But if I were to travel with the President of the United States, I wouldn't go through that. Are you following me? I know I'm not going through security. Why? Because you don't put the President of the United States through security. So I would walk through there with him at my side, with my chest elevated, because I'm with him. Are you following me? There's no security check for me when I'm with him. The Bible says, verse 6, read it for me again, the Lord is on my side, meaning the Lord is with me, and I shall not fear. Give me another word. I shall not doubt. I have a question for you. Let's say you have a difficult situation in your life right now. It doesn't show on your face, no. Can God fix it, yes or no? Now, be honest with me. Don't tell a lie on Friday night. Do you believe that with all your heart and soul? Don't answer me. Listen to God's word, then you decide if you believe it. The things which are impossible with men are possible with God. Listen to God speaking to Abraham in Genesis 18, 14. God told Abraham in 17 he'd have a child. Abraham laughed. He told Abraham and Sarah in Genesis 18 they would have a child. Sarah laughed. So husband and wife laughed at God. Here's what God said to Abraham in Genesis 18, verse 14. Is anything too hard for the Lord? What's the obvious answer? No. No. Do you believe that? If you do, anxiety will leave. But if we doubt, uncertainty comes. Anguish fills our minds. We become physically sick. He that cometh to God must believe that he is. Go to Mark 11. Let's read from verse 28. Our subject, how to have peace of mind. Mark 11, reading from verse 28. Do you have that? Let me pray again. Father in heaven, please, it doesn't take long for a human being to try to elevate himself. Suppress my nature. You elevate yourself through me, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. What book did I say? Mark, what chapter? 12, what verse? 28. What chapter did I say? 12, verse 28. And one of the scribes came, and having heard them reasoning together, that's Jesus and the audience, and perceiving that he answered them well, asked him, which is the first commandment of all? And Jesus answered him, the first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord with all thy, and with all thy, and with all thy, and with all thy, yes, with how much? All, all, all. Now, if you love God, which is believing in God, with all your heart, there is no room in you for doubt.
Go with me to Mark chapter 4. I'm trying to keep this as simple as I can. That's where Jesus preached. He kept it simple. Simplicity has power. Do you have Mark chapter 4? We read from verse 37. When you found it, say amen. amen. If you have my version, read with me. What does that say? And there arose a great storm of wind. Come on. And the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. And he was where? In the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they wake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. Now, look at that again. Verse 39. And he arose and did what? What does that mean? To rebuke. What do you use? Words. What did Jesus do? He spoke to what? The wind. What did the wind do? Give me another word. It obeyed. <laughs> I know you don't like obey. I know that. No human being loves the word obey. The wind obeyed. He rebuked the wind. Peace be still. That's what he said to the sea. We don't know exactly what he said to the wind, but the rebuke were words he spoke to the wind. And he told the sea, peace be still. The Bible says the wind ceased. There was a great calm. Peace is calm. He said, peace be still, there was a great calm. He told, he rebuked the wind, the wind ceased. He spoke. The wind responded. The sea responded. We don't. Then we say God is not a good God. Read verse 40. And he said unto them, what? Say it again. Why are you so fearful? What's our subject? How to peace of mind. What did they not have? Peace of mind. So Jesus said, you know, it's, it's really something, there must be a level of doubt those men have to surprise God. <laughs> are you following me? They surprised God. <laughs> he said, how is it? I've told you six times, clean up your room. How is it? You don't listen to me. How is it that you're so faithful? Why are you so faithful? How is it, finish the verse, that you have no faith? Look at the words again. There were, give me the word, they were fearful. They did not have faith. If they had had faith, do not have been fearful. How to have peace of mind? Trust the Word of God. Even when you cannot explain it, but you trust Him. Go to Genesis chapter 3 for me. Uh, chapter 2, uh, 13 to 8. I'll try to keep my word. Genesis chapter 2, let's read verse 7, then we'll go to chapter 3. How to have peace of mind. I want you for the next three weeks to trust the Word of God. Mm -hmm. You will never regret it. Genesis 2 verse 7, and the Lord God formed man how? Of the dust of the ground, breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Now, a lot of highly trained scientists say, no, that's not the way man began. It was evolution from a piece of protoplasm or whatever, slime, and that's how we developed. Let's reason together. That's favor number three. Go to chapter three of Genesis three. Let's read from verse 17 to 19. This is God speaking to Adam when God came down to investigate what went wrong in Eden. He spoke to the serpent in verse 15. He spoke to Eve in 16. Now he speaks to Adam from 17. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, 
and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Curse is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth unto thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. Read 20 with me now. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread. Come on. Till thou what? Return unto the ground, for out of it wast thou taken. For dust thou art. Come on and unto dust shall thou return. God says, look, you were made from dust when you die, you decompose, you become dust again. Is that clear? Now, is that true? Yes. Atheists will tell you when a person dies, after a while the person decomposes. Let me ask you this. If the Bible is true about what happens to you after you die, who can finish my words? Is it not true about how you started? Come on, reason with me. If we accept what it says about what happens when you die, you become dust, and we see it, then surely we can believe that what it says about how we began is also true, even though we cannot see that. A lot of things about the Bible you cannot see. They must be taken by faith. I'll give you one more verse and I'll let you go. Go to John chapter 20. John 20. The disciples were in an upper room. They were scared to death. They thought that what the Romans and the Jews did to Christ would be done to them. And so they were hiding in a room behind locked doors. Jesus comes to them, peace be unto you, breathes on them, gives them the Holy Ghost, then he leaves. One disciple wasn't present other than Judas, Thomas. Verse 24 of uh, Matthew of John 20. But Thomas, called Didymus, one of the disciples, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. When you see something, there's no need to believe. Are you following me? No, you're not following me. You're just being nice. Let me try again. If you went on a safari, you went camping in a mountain somewhere, where there are mountain lions and bears and tigers and whatever else, and you woke up in the morning, and you walked outside your tent, and you saw some tracks. What would you conclude? Some animal passed by. But if you woke up the next morning and actually saw the animal, do you have to believe? No, the animal is right there. Your eyesight removes the need for faith. Follow me closely. That's why science tells you, if there's no evidence, it doesn't exist. If it cannot be proven in a laboratory, in a, in a test tube, it does not exist. I have to be able to see it, hear it, smell it, taste it, or touch it for it to exist. That's science. The Bible says, through faith we understand that the worlds were framed. Are you following me? Through faith now. And so Thomas said, except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, verse 25 of John 20, and put my finger into the print of the nails and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. I want sensory evidence. Thomas was from Missouri. You've got to show me. Are you with me? <laughs> verse 26. And after eight days again, his disciples were within, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and said, Peace be unto you. Then saith he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hand. Reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless. People who need to see everything before they believe are described as faithless. Thomas said unto him, My Lord and my God, Jesus saith, Thomas, because thou hast seen Thou hast believed. Finish that verse. Blessed are they that have not seen. They have no sensory evidence, but they believe. Because Christ said in Mark chapter 8, Mark chapter 9, Mark chapter 10, I will go to Jerusalem, die, be buried, rise the third day. He said it over and over. Thomas should have just believed, thus saith the Lord. When Jesus said to Peter in Matthew 14, verse 29, come, Peter should have believed that word and not lose his grasp on that word. 
when he lost it, he began to sink. Christ is coming again. Do you believe that? In Isaiah chapter 49, verse 25, the Bible says, I will contend with him that contend with thee, and I will save thy children. Do you believe that? But how must you believe? With all your heart. All your mind. Come on. All your soul. Come on. All your strength. So there's no room for the enemy. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth. The only way to believe on Jesus is to believe his word. And so when Christ was tempted, Matthew 4, the first temptation, the devil said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, come on, tell me, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God, much of which we cannot explain. How to have peace of mind. Take God at his word. As you come from night to night, I will read from this. I will ask you sometimes to read with me so you can verify I am not inventing this. Take God at his word. You see, the, the Savior is the same person who created. And he said, let there be light. Read the next few words. There was light. The word said, let there be light. There was light. That power is in the word of God still today. Let there be light. There was light. That's how the word works. And God says, believe that. Let there be healing. Come on. There's healing. But you must believe. How? With all your heart. Come on, with all your soul. With all your mind. With all your strength. Because without faith. Now, if you and I keep displeasing God, how can we expect blessings? Are you with me? We keep displeasing God by lack of faith and expect blessings. We're trying to lose weight and we eat donuts, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. How many of you will say tonight, Lord, help me to take you at your word. Can I see your hand? God bless you. I mean that sincerely. Stand with me. Come back tomorrow. Bring somebody with you. Mm-hmm. Your husband, your wife, your boss, your supervisor, a policeman, bring somebody with you. It may change your life. Do you know what invitation has brought many people to Christ? You know, an invitation has put many people in the graveyard. Do you know, a simple invitation has landed many people in prison. Because a friend said, come, let's rob a bank. And the other guy said, well, I have nothing to do, let's go. Or some, let's smoke marijuana. Yeah, now he's in, in and out of rehabilitation program. Now you can say, come to a meeting, and God may change a person simply because you said, come. Anyone has a prayer request that's silent? Just raise your hand. A silent something you want God to do? Keep your hand up. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we come to you. We thank you for your word, dear God. It is the word that created heaven and earth, and we see the sun in the day. We see the stars and moon at night. We see the evidence that your word has power, and you have called upon us to believe this word, for in believing the word, that's how we believe you. Forgive us, dear God, for our unbelief. Let not Jesus be amazed at our lack of faith as he said, how is it that ye have no faith? Let him not say that of us, dear God, but let him marvel at our faith as he marveled at the faith of the centurion who was not a Jew. Where we've offended you, forgive us. Father, put upon every listening mind a consciousness that you love each person personally. 
And as we leave, let us leave with that awareness that the God of heaven and earth is with us. Watch over us as we sleep. Bring us back tomorrow morning and tomorrow evening. Thank you for your word that we can trust. In Jesus' name we pray. Let God's people say amen and amen. For my friends, my guests, we meet tomorrow. If you can come, come. We also meet tomorrow night to continue this meeting. Thank you for coming, and may God go with you in the person of his angels and watch over you as you sleep tonight. Good night, everyone.